Keith Haring was a prolific street artist of the 1980s. Through his short career, he was able to grow his celebrity name and reach the public through his open gallery art. Once influenced by graffiti art teachings, his style was based on improvisation and speed, working so fast that at his finest days he could produce multiple different artworks a day. Yet, unlike the rest of the graffiti artists of his time, Herring grew to interact with his audience, often choosing to draw in broad daytime in front of the crowded subway stations, creating new pieces as people bustled through the area. But his career did not start this way. The beginnings of his art learning can be credited to the culture at the time, especially Walt Disney's cartoons and his father's teachings. Eventually, he went on to a professional art college which would lead him to gain his own gallery exhibit. Though he began his career in the traditional gallery, he would soon move his art life to the public. At first, he published collages of newspapers to create outrageous headlines, posting them and intruding the public life. Later on, he discovered the vibrant alternative street art community, which had began thriving around his time. He was quickly drawn to it, and there, he began to draw for the public. Later on, he would state Andy Warhol as one of his biggest influences. From Warhol, Herring learned to mass-produce his art, but at the same time keep originality. He went on to open a pop shop for art, selling and giving pins and shirts with his artwork impl imprinted, and in doing so, helped spread his name and work while being known for his unique art. His drawings were made to catch the attention of the audience, put right in front of them and drawn right on public billboards, meant only for advertising. While working, he would often be arrested for defacing public property, yet his friends would at the same time tape these arrests to help boost his popularity. As he started to gain fame and name, people would rush down to steal panels of his art from the streets right as they were finished. This led to Herring ending his subway painting career and moving on to posters and other media which he could easily copy and print, spreading them to the public. In addition to selling his own art in his pop shop, Herring also gave away thousands of customized items, including pins, for free to the public as another means of selling and spreading his messages. In his art, he painted messages about political and societal themes, as well as common problems such as AIDS and drug abuse. Through these works, he was able to definitively send a message which he wanted the public to see. Yet all were made so that strong political and sexual themes were omitted, so that they were far more palatable for audiences of all ages. This, however, made his drawings far more ambiguous, to the point at which one could interpret them in many, many ways. One of his most famous works is his Crack is Whack mural. A painting on a New York City park handball court, the large eye-catching art shown here consists of a red background drawn on top with only black paint. The title Crack is Whack is drawn in large words above a large skeleton who has a vial in one hand and a burning zero dollar bill in his other hand. All around him are figures crowding around in a disoriented and disordered fashion. The message is clearly sent here. The idea that crack cocaine abuse is bad for everyone 
and that it must be stopped from spreading into the streets. This outrageous painting was made after his talented assistant, Benny, became seriously addicted to the crack cocaine drug. To express that the government was not doing enough, he decided to paint this mural. Though his messages spread like wildfire, his career ended shortly. At age 31, he passed from an AIDS-related disease. Still today, we can see his artwork preserved in city parks and printed around on shirts. He is definitely an artist who will be remembered for his work. This is Keith Herring.